so 76.8 this morning and I I over ate yesterday but at this stage of of the journey which is transforming my body by starting with building lots of muscle before burning fat which will probably happen at the same time it'll be much worse under eating than overeating so I, I've been eating a lot and um, like I said I'm just one week into transforming my body using my gym fit plan and as you can see I've lost a lot of muscle so the first stage of this is building lots of muscle back and I'm so sore from training yesterday was a back day I'm so sore everywhere so the doms are like I'm a complete beginner Anyway, today I'm going to take you through, um, it's a rest day, so I'm just going to do some cardio and some abs, so I'm going to take you to the, gym, to the gym with me, and then I'm going to come back and answer some Q&A questions. Coffee, BCAs, lots of water. So, the plan changed, somebody changed their mind, <laughs> she suddenly just walks faster because she doesn't want to be in the vlog but the plan changed we're not going to the gym instead we're going for a walk and uh, when I get home I'll do some stretches and some abs training like I said it's my rest day <laughs> just gotta miss that poo there's no poo in the gym on the floor is there <laughs> so I'll get home and do some abs training like I said it's my rest day so the gym isn't 100% necessary. I'm training four weights workouts per week and that finished yesterday with back and arms. So one thing I want to talk about is fasting or intermittent fasting, which I get so many questions about all the time. So right now I'm fasted. I've had coffee and BCAAs and it's, it's a conflicting, there's just so much conflicting science and evidence out there, but my main advice is if your goal is weight loss or fat loss then the number one priority is being in a calorie deficit and burning more calories than you consume that should be the priority of your thoughts however if fasting or intermittent fasting helps you get into that position with the calorie deficit then do it and if you are already in a calorie deficit or you're training to transform your body and you find that faster training helps you because to be honest with me like with Sarah as well when we're on holiday sometimes we get up and we do sprints or cardio and stuff it does help us stay lean or get leaner and it's hard to know whether that's eating well or training hard or fasting or a mixture of all of it it's hard to know what the results specifically come down to but in my opinion for the whole past week I've been doing a bit of fasted training and if you are in a deficit then ideally supplementing with BCAAs as well just to support the protein synthesis and to hopefully push the energy from fat burning rather than muscle burning and you should be good so ultimately do what you think or what you feel works best for you and that only comes from time of putting in in the uh, in the training and effort anyway look at this beautiful canal sunny morning a bit cloudy it's mother's day gonna see my mum a bit later on after training uh, so yeah let's get back and do some abs okay so abs two exercises in a tabata routine so 20 seconds work 10 seconds rest alternate between the two exercises using the crockfit app for the timer and here we go And then you rest for 10, and then get ready for exercise two, which is bicycle crunches. So we've been out, it's Mother's Day, so we've seen both of our mums, and now let's get this Q&A sorted. So, I asked these questions on Twitter and Instagram, and obviously all the disgusting and stupid questions I'm just gonna ignore and get to the real stuff. So, how do you cope with any stress and insecurities if you have any? I think stress and insecurities are two really quite different things. So let's start with stress. When I'm stressed, it depends what I'm stressed about, but if um, I get stressed a lot with work and social media and CrocFit and everything, and I think we, we now live in such a 24-7 world where we're always expected to be doing something, always expected to answer an email. Life doesn't end at 5 p.m. 
and because of that especially especially with my world on digital and social media is that it never really ends so if i don't find myself being strict with my time and think okay i've got to switch off enjoy a film or enjoy some time with sarah then i find stress builds and builds and builds because the better sleep i get the more I, i'm able to recover and and um de-stress my life so i think it's all about um being being good with my time and insecurities yeah we all have insecurities and i think it all depends on how positive and negative i'm feeling if i'm in a really good routine of training well eating well sleeping well and being like proactive in my life then my insecurities are way down low because i'm i'm working on me and I don't, I don't care what anybody thinks i don't care about anything else but if the rest of my life is really negative if i'm not exercising and i'm eating shit then my insecurities pick up as well and i'm always comparing myself to others scrolling through social media so but i always think that it comes from within benefits of foam rolling good question i foam roll because it's like a, a self massage whether it's pre-workout or post-workout or just as a massage during the day, it really helps. Well, it's a good feeling. It might be quite a psychological, like when you're working on a really sore area, it's quite a nice feeling. But it also does really release tension. If you've got any knots or sore areas, it releases tension. Also increases the blood flow to a particular area, which then enhance your recovery. So if you've got DOMS or soreness in the legs, roll them out on the foam roller nice and softly and it will help recovery it will get rid of all the waste products and increase blood flow getting oxygen all the good nutrients to the muscles increasing recovery so if you're not getting massages on a foam roller regularly then make sure you do are you religious no i'm not really religious but i'm pretty spiritual what are your hobbies outside of fitness do you have a secret ambition i get asked this question quite a lot and i always kind of forget because my life is completely <laughs> fitness but I am proper geeky on like space and the universe. I just love it so much. If I wasn't in fitness, I'd definitely try and be an astronaut or work in NASA or go searching for aliens or something. <laughs> I just, uh, I, I, I'm one of those people that just stare into space and look at the stars and, and makes me wonder. I just, it blows my mind that eternity and the universe is just, never ends anyway yeah i could just keep talking about that forever so that's definitely like a external to fitness passion of mine do you recommend separating strength and cardio when your goal is lean gains good question if your goal is lean gains so gaining muscle and staying lean or getting leaner then you don't necessarily need to separate your strength work your resistance and weightlifting from cardio you could you could do two separate sessions. Like my current routine is doing most of my walking and cardio and activity in the morning, fasted, and then I'll eat, and then in like late morning, early afternoon, I'll go and hit the weights. And maybe at the end of the weight session, I might do some more cardio or some hit training. So it can be done together or or separate sessions. It's no big deal as long as you're ticking off the things you need to do with the nutrition and the training to work towards that goal. Bro, I do great workout sessions but do excessive sex as well. Is it affecting my muscle building? How much, how much sex is he having to consider it affecting his gains? Can we just switch lives? <laughs> the answer is most probably not, as long as you are, <laughs> as long as you're staying fueled, having your BCAAs and staying hydrated, I'm sure it's fine, man. Anyway. What are your thoughts on using CBD oil? Well, I've, I've been, I've gone through a few patches of trying CBD oil um, from, I've, I've seen good, good and uh, positive and negative advice from friends and people on social media. So I wanted to try it myself and I'm not sure how much dosage is, is the right amount to take, but um, it's so hard to know whether it's psychological or real. And there's so many other aspects that can have an effect on your stress or anxiety or recovery on things. So when, ha when, when I have tried it, I haven't seen a significant positive effect, but I haven't seen anything negative or anything either. So I think I need to do it for a longer course of time to really give you a, sh a true piece of advice from me. How did you continue to exercise safely with knee pain? I had a knee injury for so long like last year I had an ankle injury then knee injury for a good three four five months um, what I did was I stayed positive to make sure that I could continue training 
in places that I felt comfortable to do so and didn't make the knee pain worse. So if my knee was really bad running or jumping, then I would avoid the impact and make sure I could still have a good workout. So I had the endorphins of feeling good from a good upper body day or something like that at the same time as working on my rehab and strengthening for whatever the injury was. So my knee needed some good strengthening and resting and working on my hamstrings and like the control. So I worked on that at the same time as knowing I could get a good workout in other parts of my body. And you just gotta be patient and eventually get to a point where the knee pain gets better, hopefully, and you work on the injury and then you feel like I feel now, which is no knee pain now and I can have awesome workouts. What is the biggest perk of being an Insta trainer? There are a lot of perks, a lot of downsides as well, but a lot of perks. Um, I'd say the biggest perk is the, the fact you guys give me so much motivation. A few years ago before Instagram, I had to pick myself up knowing that I didn't have an audience, knowing that it didn't matter. If I didn't hit the gym, no one, no one knew. But as soon as my following started to grow and I started to post on social media every day, this motivation that we have is is circular like you give me so much motivation because i know that i'm turning up to work to post my workouts to keep a good physique and i know that the better shape i'm in and the better zone i'm in the better content i can create for you and that's probably the biggest perk and that's why i want my following to go bigger and bigger and bigger because hopefully i can impact more and more people but also it works for me too. I know that it's gonna keep me so motivated. So that's gotta be one of the best perks. Who edits your videos? Or me, it takes a lot of time. Should I be trying to increase weight between sets? Some exercises I can't manage. Hello Baxter. Baxter's here for a cuddle now. Um, so this completely depends on what train, oh, Baxter. This completely depends. Baxter. The camera can just see your asshole. Come on. What? <laughs> Sit down. So, should you be increasing weights between sets? It completely depends on what training plan you're following, the structure, the type of the set, whatever you're doing and whatever your goals are. But if you're talking a standard like four times 10 chest press, for example, then no, not necessarily. If you find the right weight for 10 reps, then continue that weight for the four sets, that's absolutely fine. Over a period of weeks and months, you do wanna be trying pushing that weight just two kilos up, three kilos up, and push yourself, even if it's just eight reps, and then you get strong until you can do 10, and then repeat that process. That's how you get the progressive overload and keep making progress on the weight. So it doesn't have to be every session and every set, but knowing that when the opportunity to increase the weight is there, then you do it. I was wondering how you build muscle and stay lean. This is the kind of questions that I want because this is the stuff that everyone wants to know and even better, it's the stuff that I'm doing right now. So with training, when you're trying to get lean, um, I think people do too much cardio and not enough weight. So the first thing is making sure that your training plan is on point and that is that you are doing a structured weightlifting or, or resistance type training program, whether that's at home or the gym, alongside cardio and activity, but when it comes to your nutrition, ideally you're tracking or counting your calories and your macronutrients to know exactly what you need. So if you're trying to build muscle, you need to make sure you're hitting enough protein and you're hitting enough ca calories to make sure that you're giving the body the fuel it needs to build muscle. But at the same time, not so much that it builds muscle but also stores fat at the same time. So you need to make sure that your calories are around your maintenance level, meaning you're burning a similar amount to, that you are consuming, maybe a little bit lower, maybe a little bit higher, but it's giving the body a chance to build muscle without storing the excess fat, therefore staying lean. Maybe even getting leaner if you're building muscle, increasing your metabolism, and then giving your body more chance to burn fat at the same time. That's exactly where you need to be. So you need to find the right amount of calories that is. Use a calculation or message me. I, on, I, on my website, I've got a calculation that you can use um, or DM me and I'll help you find what that amount is. Like for example, for me at the moment, it's like 2,800, 3,000 calories daily. But what it's all about is analyzing 
where you are. Am I building muscle? Am I storing some fat? Am I recovering really badly? And adjusting as you go. And that's what chasing your goals and fitness is all about. Another question about sex. What's wrong with you guys? Is it good cardio? How often? I'm just going to move past it. What do I study at university? Fitness and personal training in Southampton, Solent. ETA for home fit on the app. Can't wait to get started. PDF is driving me mad. Home fit one will be in the CrocFit app in about three, four weeks from when this is launched. So let's say, uh, yeah, towards the end of April. Do you ever just not want to go to the gym? How do you motivate yourself? Like I said before, the motivation, it's, uh, it's a thing that comes and goes. People, people that aren't motivated think that motivation is this magical thing that once you've got it, you've got it forever. But even the most motivated people struggle with days that aren't motivated. But the most motivated people know the things that they need to do in their day that keeps them motivated. They have a checklist in their mind that they want to do and that checklist makes them feel better. And that checklist is the things that works towards the goals that they want to achieve. So of course I have down days when I'm ill and I'm just not clicking. But when I've got a goal and I'm working towards it, there's nothing that can stop me and I'm motivated as hell, just like I feel right now. What's your all-time favourite Disney movie? <laughs> I was literally just singing Let It Go Frozen with my niece like one hour ago. I don't know what my all-time favourite was, but I love that song.